Hello guys, welcome back with another video. Today we're gonna meet with one of the guests. Uh, we meet in Washington DC and today uh, I'm lucky enough that I have a conversation with him. So let's see the video. We have Sir Arif here. And Hello there. I'm not yeah. Sir. I'm only Arif. Plain Arif. Yeah. Arif uh, Chohan. Okay, so, so Sir, can you please tell us about your journey? Like yeah, well, I'm 71 years old and I do a lot of traveling. I've been traveling since I was 15. People don't believe it, but I have my photographs from the age of 15. I travel from England, where I was born, and I live in Middlesbrough. I'm still living in the same town I was born in. And I hitchhiked from there to Rome. I always wanted to go to Rome. So I saved my money when I was 13 and 14. And my first solo journey was 1968 to Rome. Since then, I basically people say, where have you been in the world? And I ask, I ask them, don't say that. Ask me where I haven't been, and I can tell you. And there's only a few countries in Africa, yeah. uh, every country in Europe I've been to, uh, and everywhere in South America. Asia, there's one or two like Bhutan, Sikkim, Tibet, places which are difficult to get to. But I enjoy travel and it keeps you young. I'm 71 years old now and I met uh, Numan here in uh, Washington DC and I asked him to take a couple of photographs of me and we got chatting and now I'm on his channel. So keep traveling, it keeps you young. And you, if you do photography like me, it makes you walk, so it keeps you healthy. And then you've always got your memories. When I look at my photographs and I look back, I've got every photograph I ever took from the age of 14 in 1966. And I was telling no man, I was here 50 years ago mm -hmm. in 1973. And I've got photographs sitting in this very same place 50 years ago. And it's always nice to compare because photography and pictures are a mirror into the past. It's history. So like you gonna be my travel guru then after because I just started traveling and you have been to every place in the world. More or less. I mean I don't go to every place for the sake of going. Uh, if, you, if you like, but if you have done yeah. 90% it means we count Yeah, I mean uh, I was telling the man I've been away eight months on this particular trip and I was in uh, Bologna and Milan in Italy, in southern Spain, in southern France. Then I went to a magnificent place, you must go to man, called Petra in Jordan. And then I was in Jerusalem, in Palestine and uh, Israel. And from there I flew uh, back to, to England, then to Cyprus and then to Pakistan. I was there four months. From Pakistan to Doha uh, and then from there to Australia. I was there five weeks. Then California, then Texas and now I'm here in Washington DC. New York and then I'll be flying back home. So if, if you uh, rank the top five destinations how would you rank them? It's very difficult. I, I'd rank them for my interest because I'm interested in old buildings and history. So like one of my top old cities is Rome and other cities with great architectural interests are Istanbul and Cairo, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're fa magnificent places to visit. And ancient cities which are now in ruins like the Petra and Jerash, uh, Ephesus in Turkey. But there are cities which are unique in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and Italy has a lot, like Venice is the only one with water. Yeah. Rome is 2,000, 3,000 years old with the buildings. Mm -hmm. Istanbul is the only city oh, with, uh, on two continents, in Europe and in Asia. And of course, uh, if you go to India, uh, and you go to a place called Rajasthan, uh, Raja is king. Uh, and Rajasthan is land of the kings because every town has a massive fort, wonderful Maharaja palace, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer, Mawa, Biwa, uh, fantastic place to visit. Uh, and India and Pakistan have got incredible forts, incredible mosques, incredible palaces, great place. Uh, one of the unique places is Burma. I would recommend Burma if you can go there. It's called Myanmar now. I, I only went in 73 when there was very few tourists, but incredible. South America also, you have Peru and Bolivia. And if you're in Africa, Kenya. Kenya is wonderful and unique. It's unique because it's got an old city like Mombasa, a new city like Nairobi, but it's got mountains like uh, Mount Kenya, second largest in Africa. Kilimanjaro is the largest. But what makes it unique is the animal life. You will only find that in East Africa, Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. Nowhere else in the world will you have lions and, and elephant and rhino roaming free in Savo, Amboseli. So yes, Kenya is a country unique. Brazil, I like because of the people, beautiful people in Brazil. That's wonderful. That's all because you've been traveling, so you have so much information about the world. And at the moment, my brain's still working, so I can remember everything. You're 71, right? 71. And you're like, like 
your professor, your pro processor is like working. <laughs> I'm still lucky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one other thing was, I mean, I trained as a history teacher, uh, but I got a job which was my dream job. I was an airline steward with British Airways for 27 years. So I saw a lot of places with them, but I've traveled more without them. Wonderful, sir. wonderful. Sir. Nice meeting you. And uh, one, one last question. Please. Yes. What is the one of the interesting event happened during traveling, like anywhere in the oh, world? Oh, I've like had many, many... Any funny, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I've had many, many interesting incidents. Many of them are what you would call incredible coincidences, where I've met people that I met maybe 50 years, 40 years earlier, uh, and then you, you bump into them. I was in, uh, uh, in London, I think, yes, and then somebody said to me, Hello, Araf. And I looked around, and it was somebody I met in Afghanistan 40 years earlier. I lost contact, and they saw me taking these photographs, and I couldn't believe it. I hadn't seen him for 40 years, he recognized me. And of course, you, you have many interesting experiences when you're traveling. You meet incredible people, friendly people, and my experience is the poorer the people, the more friendly they are. You know, they open up to you, they'll share their meal, they, you know, it, it's fantastic. And travel broadens the horizon. Whoever you are, whatever your race, whatever your background, whatever your religion is irrelevant. You start talking to people, like I was talking to Numan. I didn't know what Numan was, it didn't matter to me. Numan's a human being. As it happened, he's a similar background to me, you know, we, my, both our parents are from Pakistan. I'm Punjabi, he's Sindhi, but that was just a stroke of luck. He could have been Gujarati, Bengali, it didn't matter. He's a human being and I just asked him to take a couple of photographs and now we're chatting and I'm on the, t on the channel. Yep, so like traveling gives us the other side of... of yes, the you meet people and if you're talkative like me, uh, then it's great because you know, it's not good if you're going to travel and you're going to stay quiet. You need to talk, you need to ask questions and of course you meet travelers who are very helpful, they will help you. Like I've been telling Noman certain cheap ways to get flights and buses, uh, you know, sometimes People know these things, but there's no harm in uh, double checking. Do you know where to get to this place? Do you know how this is? Do you know this? Because it's all about experience. And when you travel, you meet people who've done things, done things you maybe haven't done, so they can guide you. Yep. It means Google won't help you to find no, the cheapest ticket. No, it's no. the people who, who, who travel, who experience exactly in their lives. So, so wonderful talking to no, you. And you, uh, no man. I, I hope we well, we'll, again no, we'll stay destination. in contact. We'll stay in contact, yeah. inshallah. So, and uh, we, will, uh, we will meet again. We'll uh, meet again in, an, in another yeah. country, probably. Yeah, yeah. There's a very traveling. famous English song by a lady called Vera Lynn. She was a singer in the Second World War. And she said, We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when. But inshallah, <laughs> she didn't say inshallah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll meet again some sunny day. Inshallah, Inshallah. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful talking okay. to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, uh, guys.